Morning, dearest. What's for breakfast? Mush. How did you guess? I love mush. Can't get enough mush. Even after 97 straight days, I still look forward to your delicious corn mush. Well, we're out of corn. <laughs> so, yes. so what's in the... Yeah. Oh, that's just boiling water. Oh, 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 I'm sorry. Well, why don't I go in the pantry and get some barley or ham hocks or maybe a large turkey for the soup? Oh, oh, oh I remember, because we're starving! <laughs> Calm down, calm down. I know it's been a long, hard winter. Longer than we planned for. I mean, it started in August. How are we to know? Mm. Still, it's the first day of spring. Life blossoms anew. Promise of a new harvest, new beginnings. Children, wake up. <laughs> Welcome in the spring. <laughs> Look, the thaw has begun. Up, children, your boiling water's ready. Water! Can I lick the spoon? You know, when you think about it, this leak in the roof's a good sign. It means a four feet of snow up there is melting. Why do you even ask him to fix things? He's terrible with his hands. Look at this horrible, drafty house he built. I don't know why you ever married him. I told you, told you it was a mistake. But I love your son. Morning, Mother. Don't talk to me. How did we ever let him convince us to leave England? Ah, oh, England. What is it you miss most, Mother? The religious persecution? The extreme poverty? The fine food? No, Mother, we oh, oh. Come warm yourself by the fire. William, bring your father the auger and the mallet. Oh, your father's working with a mallet. Better get the bandages and the splints. And children, protect your eyes. Ah, what's wrong? I burned myself again. You know, Mother, instead of cooking over an open fire, maybe someday someone could construct some type of contained unit, made of metal, perhaps. That would trap the heat and provide a flat surface where you could cook. She's a witch! <laughs> Now, Abigail, that was funny the first time, but not every Puritan has your sense of humor. Or any sense of humor at all, really. Here you are, Father. That's an awl, not an auger. I mean, how do you do that? I only have three tools. Mother, this spinning wheel isn't going to last much longer. Well, there should be a new one coming on the next supply ship. Oh, that ship will never get here. It's probably been taken by pirates. And all the females have been ravished by those sweaty, strapping buccaneers. A sweaty rip. Mother Winthrop, the children. If I can't have my stories, I might as well die. There we are, William. Almost finished. There. Splint, bandages. Coming, dear. Thumbnail going to fall off, Father? It usually takes about a week. Can I have it when it does to add to my collection? Of course. What a strange little boy you are. Now go in the back and bring out some twine. When I come back, may I have some candy? Yeah, if you're quick about it. So, you finally reopened the store. Yes, Mrs. Sturgis, and what a beautiful day it is. The snow is melting, everyone out and about, airing out their clothes, dragging out their dead. I'd like to return this. Mm-hmm. These are the bones of a chicken. Yes. We bought it here and it died. How? From the moment we took it home, it seemed awkward and disoriented. <laughs> then it fell on an axe and died. Mrs. Sturgis, you've obviously boiled and eaten this chicken. I have a receipt. You can't eat a chicken and expect to get your money back. How rude. I'm gonna take my business elsewhere. Oh, good luck. What are you gonna do, walk to Jamestown? Dear, I need 
you to take a look at poor Elizabeth. Her tooth really aches. Oh, oh my poor dear. We'd better take you to see Dr. Addington. I'm afraid it's going to hurt. Oh, oh isn't that cute? <laughs> of course it's going to hurt. <laughs> I don't want to talk about it anymore. James, help settle an argument for us. Which is a worse sin, dancing or thinking about dancing? The thought is father of the deed, therefore the thought is the primary sin. Oh, shut up, you festering bag of pus. <laughs> Friends, isn't anger a worse sin than either of them? Oh, I should have known you'd spout drivel like that, you ignorant, weak-minded shopkeeper. <laughs> and would you like to settle your bill now? He makes a good point about anger. <laughs> Every customer who's been in today has been on edge. I'm telling you, this long winter has destroyed the morale of the whole town. What are you smiling at? I'm thinking about dancing. <laughs> oh, now I'm thinking about dancing. <laughs> Polly, how about Saturday we send Mother and the children into the woods to pick berries and you and I dance until the cows come home? And when is that? About 4, 4.30. <laughs> Until Saturday, then. <laughs> Can I help you? No, just browsing. Well, uh, if you need anything, just. Uh... Ah! <laughs> Something wrong? Okay, uh, just a moment. This is a robbery. Hand over your valuables. Cotton, is that you? No. <laughs> it is I, Dirk the Highwayman. My name strikes terror into the hearts of all the... <laughs> Cotton, I've known you for years. I can't believe you'd robbed me. It's not my fault, James. I'm the victim here. I'm not even supposed to be in America. I mean, all I know is one minute I'm drinking in that nice waterfront tavern in England. Next thing I know, I wake up on the Mayflower. <laughs> and this, this winter was ridiculous, James. I, I, I lost all my crops and, and livestock. I, I was driven to a life of crime. Or would have been if you'd cooperated. Right, that's done it. Gentlemen, everyone, gather round. I have an announcement to make. I have decided, in the hopes of lifting the spirits of the community to hold a gathering in a shop tonight. Everyone is invited. There'll be music and, uh, well, not dancing because that's a sin, but uh, it'll be a, well, not a party because that would be wrong. But, uh, but I assure you, we'll all have lots of, well, not fun because that goes against everything we stand for, of course. <laughs> Polly? Tonight at eight, we're opening the last barrel of beer. <laughs> much better. Really, it does. Oh, Elizabeth, I've told you there's nothing to worry about. Dr. Addington is here to help you. Ah! <laughs> oh, dear Lord! Let me die now and end this agony! <laughs> oh, well, three o'clock is here. We'll be done soon. Usually they've passed out by now. But you know, these Scotsmen... <laughs> Would you like a complimentary leech <laughs> to bring down the swelling? Um, she's a little squeamish around leeches. I see you shelter her. <laughs> you have to learn that bleeding is your friend. <laughs> oh, I've got a little bit of a headache. <laughs> oh, hey, hey, look at this. Plymouth Fashions. Well, here's a new spring color. What? Black. Well, you're set. <laughs> Maybe we should come back some other day. Oh, Polly, you know how hard it is to get an appointment with this man. I mean, he's the best. <laughs> Good first day. <laughs> we'll pick it up again tomorrow at tea. <laughs> What's next? 
Ah, one last extraction. Hold her down. This shouldn't take long. <clears throat> shouldn't you wash that first? Why? Well, couldn't you be passing disease from patient to patient? How? <laughs> Maybe there's tiny creatures smaller than the eye can see living inside of people's mouths. <laughs> she has a healthy imagination. <laughs> imagination sounds more like black magic to me. <laughs> what have we talked about before? Just because we think it doesn't mean we have to say it. <laughs> hey, Father, my feet touch the ground now. Oh, my little girl is growing up. <laughs> okay, open wide. This is great. I've got to get one of these for my office. <laughs> You know, I've just realized this is the first party we've ever thrown in America. Yes, and it's just as bad as the ones we threw in England. Ah, <laughs> oh, Mr. Tungsley. And the lovely Mrs. Tungsley. And uh, how was your winter? Long, dreary nights trapped in a snowbound house with nothing to do. Uh, how, may I ask, were you and your wife able to find, well, how shall I put it, private moments with your 11 children in that one-room house? Oh, we've got our little tricks. We found the most effective was yelling, What are you talking at? It's a sound advice. So, have you thought of a name for the baby yet? Well, with 11 children, we've already used up all the family names. So we decided to let you name it. Well, I'm honored. Oh. So? so? You mean now? Well, she's already started her contractions, so... Yes, and I've gotten really quick at this. I remember with the last baby, I was laughing so hard at a public execution, it just popped right out. Ah, the circle of life. <laughs> well, everyone, I can't tell you how happy it makes me to see you all gathered here. I think just getting together has already lifted the spirits of the community. Well, I, uh, I won't say it's been a long winter, but the last time I saw a flower, Sir Walter Riley still had his head. <laughs> it's a tough room. I begged you not to do political humor. <laughs> Let's start the evening with a, with a few uplifting words from our spiritual leader, the Reverend Goodacre. Oh. Announcement. The Hartleys are celebrating their seventh wedding anniversary today. Oh. Our congratulations. Reverend, Mr. Hartley died of pneumonia last Friday. Oh. Our condolences to Mrs. Hartley, especially considering that her husband is now burning in hell! <laughs> Don't worry, the temperate drinking! Burning, burning, burning! Reverend Goodacre, ladies and gentlemen. As usual, uh, inspirational and really, really scary. Uh, well, the important thing to remember is that the ship from England will be here soon with new supplies, new seeds for our harvest, new medicines, and new hope for the coming year, because, oh, because we're not the kind of people who are easily discouraged by a few snow flurries, a couple of head colds, a 50% mortality rate. No. No, we're pilgrims. Strong-willed people who will never give up. Everyone, great news! 
The ship has been sighted, and it'll be docking here tomorrow. Oh. Isn't this wonderful? Yes, we can all go home. Back to England. Who's for going back to England? Oh. Who's for giving up? Oh. James, you were right. This did cheer everyone up. <laughs> Well, what do we do now? Well, we could either let this drag us down, or we could finish off the rest of the beer and pretend it's Saturday. <laughs> oh, I love it when I get to see your hair. So, James, out here going on a business sale? Not going out of business, Mother. I'm staying open. Then I wish you well with your new clientele of woodchucks and their parasitic vermin. <laughs> James, I admire you and your convictions. Uh, I know right now you feel like a lone voice crying in the wilderness, but pretty soon... Well, you will be, because I'm going to. <laughs> oh, you don't have any money. How will you afford passage? Uh, I'm planning on stowing away. Put me in this bag. <laughs> Just stop it. No, no, James, if I don't make this boat, I'm stuck here for another year. And let's face it, I am not a farmer. I mean, cows, they don't respect me. They don't listen. Father, we're not really staying here, are we? Yes, of course we are. We've built a home here. No, you built a home. A crappy one. <laughs> well, water's pouring through that hole in the ceiling you supposedly fixed. Well, James, I could take care of that roof. And then you'll owe me one. You do that for me, I'll get you on the ship. One patched roof, coming up. You see, that's what makes America great. Neighbor helping neighbor, friend helping friend. It's not saying, what can this colony do for me? It's saying, what can I do for this colony? <laughs> now, don't you see that, Mother? Wonder what they're serving on that ship. <laughs> oh, it's that sow's belly. Mm, boy, I like sow's belly. <laughs> me too, Grammy. Tell that story again about the pirates seizing the ship. Oh, well, Black Jack Ketchum is a burly man. With no respect for womankind or their delicate undergarments. Stop it. You can say stop it, but that means nothing to old Black Jack. We are not getting on any ship. If we stay here and everyone else leaves, won't that hurt my chances of ever finding a boyfriend? What? Hey, Abigail, you're much too young to be thinking about boys. I'm 14. Half the girls in my class are already engaged. <laughs> and I suppose if half the girls in your class jumped off a cliff, you'd do that too? Gosh, Father, I never thought of it that way before. <laughs> Father, Mother sent me to tell you something. Well, yes, what is it? I forget. It was important, too. Can I have some candy? Yes, go and see what your mother wants. Mother, will you watch the shop? Why don't you close early due to failure? No matter how much you beat me down, I'm going to succeed. Look at you. Optimistic, cheerful, positive. Whose son are you? <laughs> What in the world? Oh, now I remember. Fire! <laughs> Great. All my stuff is burnt. <laughs> oh, James. <clears throat> I was using some hot tar to patch your roof, and, well, <laughs> I wasn't sure the tar was hot enough. But... <laughs> you can put your mind at ease about that. That tar was... Plenty hot. <laughs> okay, uh, let's see, a, a few embers must still be glowing. <laughs> oh no, not this again. Mom, comes on fire again. Good. <laughs> Woo, I forget. <clears throat> Is it uh, a roll around the dirt or run around screaming? <laughs> what the heck? <laughs> <laughs> well. I thought we had a problem with privacy before. <laughs>
James, are you going to say anything? What is there to say? The house is gone. Not that it was much of a house anyway. Oh, it's too bad Mother isn't here to see this. I can almost hear her laughing now. <laughs> I heard that, Mother. <laughs> All right, I give up too. Is that what you want to hear? Do you hear that, everyone? James Winthrop is defeated and he quits. <laughs> So what if our hopes and dreams of a new nation are shattered? I don't care. We'll just pack up our belongings and... Hey, we're already packed. <laughs> Come on, I'll race you to the dock. Last one there's a rotten egg. A what? Well, I'm just trying to think of something you wouldn't want to be. <laughs> no, you're right, it's just strange. <laughs> oh, so it's come to this. You're terribly disappointed in me. James, how could I be disappointed in you? You're a man of principle and vision, and you're my ride home. <laughs> now, the truth is, anywhere you and the children are is home. Really? Hmm. Because my friend Francis Cook has started this venture in the Far East, and you I thought, well... push it. <laughs> hey, we got us another girl. It's a whopper. <laughs> Alice, congratulations. What an enormous little girl. <laughs> what did you name her? Well, we finally just decided to open the Bible up at random, and wherever our finger landed, that was it. How spiritual. So what did you come up with? Oxen. Oh, little Oxen Tungsley. Cute, didn't it? Although it might lead to some teasing later on. What do you mean? Nothing. Nothing. Look, the ship. Hurrah! Finally! Sailors! <laughs> when we're on the ship, I get to sit by the window. No fair! I want to sit by the window! I want to sit by the window! Stop it! I hate you! Oh, oh it's going to be a long three months. <laughs> oh, what difference does it make? Anything's better than staying here. I'm sorry we ever came to this place. I'm not sorry, Father, when I think of all the times we've had here together as a family. Building our own house, plowing our own fields, watching the misty sunrise over the verdant landscape of our new world. <laughs> I wouldn't trade our times here for anything. Nor would I. You're right, Elizabeth. We can't leave. What? What? Wait a minute. I said I wouldn't trade it, but I'm ready to move on. <laughs> No, oh, you've made me realize what we're giving up. I mean, this is our home. Everyone? The Winthrops are staying. We are? Yes, we are. What did you say to them? Hey, nobody ever listened to me before. <laughs> we came here with a dream. Don't any of you remember that? A dream that we could build a society based on virtue and morality, not class distinctions or ancient aristocracies. That we could make a country every bit as good and noble as our finest dreams. What's with her? Polly, what are you talking about? America's a terrible place. Yes, it's nothing like those brochures they showed us. <laughs> oh, forget it. It's a lost cause. America, good riddance. Hooray! 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 Blake, stay back and clean. Blake! <laughs> oh, what the heck? We'll give it another year. Ah, uh, America the Beautiful. You've got to start writing these things down. <laughs> All right. Which one is log A? <laughs>
Mother, it's beautiful. Uh, yes, we'll show our guests that even though we're simple folk, we set a fine table. What's the point in setting the table? There won't be a main course anyway. James and Cotton will be home from their hunt soon. <gasps> My idiot son and his idiot friend have probably mistaken one another for deer and shot each other by now. <laughs> Mother Winthrop, James is a skilled outdoorsman. I'm sure he'll bring home a fine, plump pheasant. Hmm? Okay, here's our story. 